So let's say you get this mock-up, all right? How might we build this for iOS? Well, if we look closely, we might have two UI buttons at the bottom. Those are in a stack view. We have an image at the top. Maybe the whole thing is in a stack view. And uh, in, in UIKit, all these things are UI views, right? So UI button is a UI view. UI image view is a UI view. UI text view is a UI view. Even things that hold UI views are UI views, right? So UI stack view is a UI view. UI table view is a UI view. And, uh, and, and if we look closely here, maybe this, this middle bit, this map view, is a custom view. So how, how do we deal with that? Well, we can just subclass UI view ourselves, right? No problem. But if you think about it, this is pretty remarkable. From outside of UIKit, we can create our own views. And, and we can go on and, and make our iOS app. But what happens if our boss comes back to us and says, hey, what about a Mac app? And what do you do? Well, you have to do the same thing all over again with NS views and NS buttons. And if your boss comes back to you again and says, what about a website? Well, you'd have to do the same thing all over again, again, with HTML and CSS and JavaScript. And that's unfortunate, right? Because if we have this layout, this view hierarchy, that we know we want on all platforms, why is it that we have to define it multiple times? Wouldn't it be nice if we could have one representation of our view hierarchy and interpret it in multiple ways? If we could take our view hierarchy and re-render it on iOS, macOS, the web, uh, that, that should be possible, right? And, and moreover, this is actually a specific instance of a more general problem. And this general problem is called the expression problem. Okay, so the expression problem is all about extensibility, about extensibility in two dimensions. The expression problem says it's really hard to, to do this, to be extensible in these two dimensions. And uh, in, in, in the view case, uh, our one dimension is the ability to add new views, to make our custom map view. And on the other side, it's the ability to make new interpretations for our views. And it's actually a really significant problem in the functional programming community. Personally, I've been looking for a long time for a solution that, that works well in Swift. And until recently, I, I haven't found one. But today, we are finally solving the expression problem. So if, if, if we think about it, if we think about a solution, we know that subclassing is not going to work. We know that subclassing doesn't work because UIKit uses subclassing, and we ran into the problem where we couldn't reinterpret our view hierarchies. But what if we used an enum? Well, it's not going to work. But we're going to run into a separate limitation, a separate issue. And, and when we think about the problems we have with enums and the problems we run into with subclassing, we'll be able to really understand the, the solution and how it addresses those limitations. So pretend we had enumkit. Enumkit is just like UIKit, except we don't have a UI view base class. We have an indirect enum called view. Now, the specific cases of the enum are the specific subclasses of UI views in, in UIKit. So, so a button is a case of the enum, and all of the associated values of, the, of that case are all the information necessary to draw the button properly. Okay? So we have the same thing for a text field, a text view, image view, um, and recursive views like stack view, table view. The only difference is with these recursive views, these views that hold other views inside of them, they have this extra parameter that is some sort of collection of views 
and we use a view recursively. That's why it has to be an indirect unit. Now, how might we describe a view in this library? Well, let's think about the two buttons, okay? So from our mock-up, those, those buttons at the bottom, we have a stack view, it's horizontal, and then inside of it, we have a like button and a skip button, and that's it. But we haven't really given meaning to this view. It's just, it's just an enum, right? So to give meaning, to, to render it, we do a recursive traversal, right? So this is the interesting bit. Um, this is, this is a, a template here. So if we want to render something, we make a method, render something, return something, and we switch on self. If we have a text field, we return something with the text field information. If we have a stack view, we recursively call render on the children and then use those subviews in some way. So we can recover the power of UIKit, or most of it anyway, by making a render UI view method. Okay? So we switch on self. If we have a text field, we make a UI text field. If we have a stack view, we make a UI stack view. We recursively call render on all the children, and we add each of the views to the stack view. Okay? But what's cool about this is we can also render to NS views with minimal effort. We just make a new method, and we switch again. And of course, we have to handle every case. But we do run into a problem. How do we add new view types? Well, the way that you'd think is to reach in and modify the enumkit internals. And this is sort of equivalent to reaching into UIKit to modify UIView. This is something that we don't do. We don't want to do it. We want our libraries to be libraries, and we just want to consume them. We don't want to change them. So it's not going to work here. So that leads us back to the expression problem. Uh, if, if you're a chart person, maybe this will make sense. Um, but it's really all about extensibility, okay? On the y-axis, it's the ability to add new interpretations. In our, in our view example, this is rendering a view hierarchy to iOS, macOS, and web. And then the x-axis is about adding new items. In, in our view example, this is about creating the custom map view. So the expression problem is all the way up and to the right. Okay? So we need, we need something that can solve both of these problems. Now, we, we can consider non-exhaustive enums. Um, for those that don't know, there's this proposal uh, that might still be out. I, I'm not even sure. Um, but it's about making enums open to adding new variants from outside of the module that it was originally declared in. And we can try it. So we still have an indirect enum for view. We still have all the cases for each individual view in UIKit. We have a button, a text field, a stack view, a table view, text view. And, and now, from outside the module, we can extend the enum. We can add a new case. So, so we do solve one of those problems. We can create our map view. But when we try and do our render methods, well, we switch on self. We handle the button case, the text field case, the stack view case, the image view case, everything in UIKit. And then non-exhaustive enums require us to have this default case. And in the default case, what do we really do? <laughs> How do we return an NS view? So we get stuck. Well, what about protocols? It's always protocols, isn't it? Um, <laughs> but it's not just protocols, um, and then I'm going to end the talk, right? It's using protocols in a specific way, all right? So if we do this in the right way, we can solve the expression problem. In order to prove this to you, I'm going to show you the following things. I'm going to show you how to provide initial views using the protocols, and this would be inside the library. I'm going to show you how to add new views from outside the library. I'm going to show you how you can build view hierarchies using these primitives. And I'm going to show you how you can provide multiple interpretations for the view hierarchies, all without modifying the library. Okay? 
So before we get started, I just want you to recall the enum example, all right? So we have an indirect enum for view, we have a button and a stack view. Now, the, the view is going to be a protocol, uh, because I told you that. <laughs> but um, what does it really mean to be a more specific view? Like, what does it mean to be a button? Well, each individual view, so the button, for example, is a static method. So we say static func button. The, the associated values in the enum turn into parameters of our static method. And then we return self. Okay? And self is a special type that I'll, I'll explain more later. The stack view is similar, but we also replace the recursive view with self. So, so in the children parameter, we use self there as well. And again, we do the same thing for images and text and table views and so on until we go through all of UIKit. Now, I'm, I'm going to show you what happens with this self thing. It's, it's pretty interesting, I think. So when we conform to view with a concrete struct or class or enum, then uh, what happens is the, this real type gets replaced with self everywhere that self is. So in the button case, it's in the return value. In the stack view case, it's in the recursive position and in the return value. All right? Now, how do we add new views later? We just make a protocol. So this with map view is another protocol, has another static method. This time, we'll call it map. It takes a GPS point, and it returns self. Okay. Now, how might we build the view hierarchy? Let's look at our example from before the, with the two buttons. So instead of a value, we're going to use a function. And the, the function needs to be generic. So it takes a v, which conforms to view, and, and it returns that v. Now, when we do this, Swift knows that all these static methods that we declared earlier appear on v. So we can create a stack view using v.stack. And inside there, we can use a like button and a skip button. And, and Swift is smart enough to know that when we say dot button, we mean invoke the static method on the receiver v. So this actually does compile. Um, and, and then we can think about our full view now which didn't work in the enum example because we couldn't define map. And here, the v is not just a view. It's a view and it's with map view. It has both capabilities. And so now we can still create a stack view. But in the children, we can use our map view. And we can even call our function that we defined earlier, our two buttons. All right? So again, we didn't really provide meaning yet. This is just sort of the description of the view. So in order to provide meaning, to render it, to interpret it, we use a protocol instance. Okay? So if we want to recover the power of UIKit again, all we have to do is make UI view conform to view. And when we do that, the compiler will say, hey, you should implement this static method to handle the text view. In this case, we just make a UI text view and return it. And we do the same thing for image view and table view and stack view, et cetera. But since it's just a protocol, we can add other conformances. We can make HTML conform to view. All we have to do is provide an implementation for all the methods. So in this case, in the text view, we return a p tag. So now we can use it. Our full view, remember, is a generic function. So if we invoke it in the context where the type checker is expecting a UI view, then Swift will just give us the UI view. So in a view controller, for example. If, in the same class even, we want to use that view in a different way, we just call the function again. So assuming that we have some type PDF that conforms to view and, some and PDF also conforms to with map view, then we can show a PDF of our view by just invoking it in that context. Now, if you, if, if you Google this and, and you want to learn more, so you search uh, expression problem with protocols and self and Swift, um, you won't really find anything. 
But if you search final tag list style, you will find things. So specifically, as I've described it, a protocol is a final tag list DSL, and a protocol instance is a final tag list interpreter. Now, I don't want to just leave you here, because I told you that the expression problem was more general than just views. So I want to talk about some more expression problem instances before I leave. So let's think about diagrams on a canvas. So I'm talking about a situation where we have a bunch of shapes and uh, we're able to layer them on top of each other in some way. The items are the specific shapes, but also the layering of those shapes. Then we can interpret them using core graphics, we can interpret them with core animation, we can even interpret them into an SVG and then serialize it, send it over the network, put it in a web view. Now, we can think about side effects. So the items are the effects themselves. Post request, uh, analytics tracking packet, and there's an obvious interpretation that is performing the effect for its effect but we can also log the effect, not perform it. We could even emit a data structure that we can write tests against. We can think about arithmetic expressions. So I'm talking about you know, one plus two minus three. So things you would type into a calculator. The items are the numbers, the addition of numbers, the multiplication of numbers, subtraction of numbers, the Fibonacci of a number, the square root of a number. The interpretations, well, we could evaluate it to a number. We could evaluate it to a string and just see the expression written out. We could even evaluate it to a UI view and then view the expression in some way, like in a nice tree. So to recap, the expression problem. It's about extensibility in two dimensions, okay? The ability to change your interpretation and the ability to create new items. Now, the final tagless approach solves the expression problem in a nice way, I think, in Swift. And the items are the methods within protocols that return self, and the interpretations are the protocol instances. So if you want to learn more, uh, that top link is a 45-page PDF uh, on the topic. It's not using Swift, though. Um, the second one is a gist to a uh, this side effects example that Chris Idoff made. Um, by the way, I'm going to post the slides, so don't worry. Uh, the third is a repository showing the diagram example, the tagless graphics. And then uh, we actually, uh, I worked on Swift Talk episodes with Chris and Florian on this topic. Um, so there are the links there. All right, thank you.